All right, welcome back, everyone, to Plant-Based Kidney Health. As always, I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi. My partner is Michelle Krosmer. So, Michelle, today's question that was asked was, let's talk a little bit about the role of turmeric in chronic kidney disease and specifically talking in terms of cooking, supplementation. Can we get a little bit of information on that? Yeah, so turmeric is, of course, that you, we always think of the the yellow color of it and, you know, curry powder, and it's a spice that's used in cooking. Um, and then curcumin is the, um, the active component in turmeric that has been studied and found to have um, anti-inflammatory and an- antioxidant properties. Um, and it's studied in, you know, varying chronic diseases. So that's why it's so interesting and why we want to talk about it. Um, but it's also specifically studied in kidney disease and people with, with kidney disease. Um, so looking at different studies and different systemic reviews and meta-analysis, um, kind of two main ones that I, that I want to talk about. Um, one of them showed that supplementing with the curcumin, again, that active component of turmeric, um, did help with lowering creatinine, cholesterol, fasting blood sugar, um, and it was systolic blood pressure. Um, and then that review didn't find significant benefits on lowering blood urea nitrogen, diastolic blood pressure, or proteinuria. And this was specifically in people with diabetic kidney disease. And then another review looking at um, randomized control trials found that the curcumin supplementation did have favorable benefits for people with kidney disease, um, but most of those benefits were because of lowering oxidative stress and lowering inflammation, which we know plays a role in kidney disease and kidney disease progression. And in, in that review, they didn't find that the kidney-specific clinical parameters like lowering proteinuria, BUN, creatinine, um, that those were significant, or if there was some changes, then, you know, the evidence was weak. But then this review did find that there weren't any serious adverse risks or outcomes from supplementing with the curcumin. Um, Then there are animal studies that actually, and I think the, you know, exciting thing is that animal studies actually have shown that there are um, the benefits of the curcumin supplementation in lowering proteinuria, creatinine, BUN. And so I I think it's uh, just this tricky thing where we have some um, evidence. We need more large-scale studies, especially in humans, um, more randomized control trials so that we just, we know more than just, hey, it's possibly effective for for these things. Um, The other thing Two is the curcumin supplementation has been studied in late stages of kidney disease and dialysis patients to help with puritis or that severe itching. Um, And it was a dose about 500 milligrams taken three times a day, and it was um, helpful in, in that severe itching. So I think overall, if we think that of, of what we know with the curcumin supplementation, it's a very strong and potent antioxidant, um, anti-inflammatory properties, possibly effective in lowering creatinine, um, you know, blood pressure and, and these things that we're really looking at with kidney disease. But we need more, we do need more studies. We can't conclusively say, hey, if you supplement with curcumin, your creatinine and your BUN and proteinuria are all going to decrease. Um, and I'll get into a little bit more of that. But the other thing that I think that's important is then we know, okay, possible um, benefits of it. Well, what's the safety of it? So again, there doesn't appear to be serious adverse outcomes, but some things that people would want to consider is that um, curcumin supplementation can potentially inhibit um, or, or reduce iron absorption. Um, it can have an anti- coagulant property, so it can interact with blood clotting. Um, It can potentially lower blood sugar. So if people are on medications that lower blood sugar, then they would want to pay extra close attention to that to make sure they're not becoming hypoglycemic. And then, of course, we always say this is that with anything that has these Um, this response on the immune system. If someone is post-kidney transplant or any transplant, then you'd really want to make sure that you are checking with your doctor before taking taking this, especially in higher therapeutic doses. Um, Now, having said that, you know, that's kind of supplementation. And again, with supplements for curcumin, typically what you find are about 500 to 1,000 milligrams a day is what you'll usually see for supplements. Um, Again, from the dialysis study and other, you know, Oftentimes therapeutic doses are higher, maybe 1,000 to 2,000 milligrams, but that is something that you would want to be checking with your physician or renal dietitian before um, you are starting to do. Now, the other thing I think that's important to keep in mind is that we, you know, we're 
looking at curcumin in this and that being that active compound of or component of turmeric, but there can be other things, other components of turmeric as a spice and how it's used in cooking that can be beneficial for people. And we don't want to forget about that, that if we're using it and seasoning and especially what we're you know, cooking with it, that's where a lot of benefits can be seen. So if you're using turmeric or curry powder on your vegetables and your chickpeas and, um, you know, or some sort of stir fry or in a, I don't know, a dressing you make for your salad, like there's all these compounding um, benefits of getting fiber and vitamins and minerals and antioxidants in addition to that. Um, and then the other thing is you typically want to be using black pepper with the turmeric to help increase the bioavailability of, um, of that turmeric. And then the other thing, I think that's just anytime we're talking about inflammation and anti-inflammatory things, it's, it's not a miracle, um, pill or cure or supplement that if you are not you know, really looking at your body and where is this inflammation stemming from or what is what diet and lifestyle changes are you making that then potentially the curcumin supplement might help because of its antioxidant, anti-inflammatory properties. That's really important because if you're doing nothing at all and you just start taking the supplement, then that's not where we see the benefits. Um, and so that's important to keep in mind. And then again, in using it in cooking, it doesn't have to just, I mean, again, we often think of it in like curry dishes and it's giving that yellow and kind of that, that, um, heat or that spice, but you, like I put it in tea, I put it in coffee. Anytime I make any grain like, um, brown rice or quinoa, farro, barley, um, while it's cooking, I always do black pepper, turmeric and garlic powder and pretty much any grain I'm cooking. Um, I use it in tofu marinades so you can use it in all different ways and it adds good flavor. And again, I'd say on the safe end, using it and cooking is great. If you're wanting to use it as a supplement, you need to check with your physician first because of those potential side effects. Um, but overall for kidney disease, there is some research on it. We want more, but it is um, potentially beneficial. Do you have anything to add to that, Dr. Ashmi? No, this, this was great. Uh, just, you know, a couple of things that are important for people to remember. First is if you're going to supplement with it, it's better to go ahead and do the powder over the pill going on. And part of that reason is, is when we go ahead and do the capsules, the capsules that contain turmeric, sometimes the capsules come from one location, turmeric comes from another location. So even if the brand is testing out the turmeric itself, they may not have been testing out the capsules. So what some of the data has shown is, is, a lot of the capsules, they're actually coming from outside of the U.S., for example, from China and et cetera. And the amount of heavy metals that was in them is quite substantial in mm -hmm. the capsule itself, not the curcumin, not the turmeric going on there. So that's one thing to be aware of. The other thing is, is if you're going to do the powder, it is important to make sure that you get it to be USD organic. So USD organic criteria is very strict. It has to be 95% meeting their standards. We wish it was 100%, but USD standard is actually 95 or more going on. So that gives you a lot more reassurance than just getting regular turmeric or regular curcumin. Because the problem with even powder is you can have a lot of heavy metals in the powder and not know it. The process of trying to isolate uh, turmeric or isolate curcumin going on, the, the danger that you run into it is sometimes whether it's the conveyor belts they're using or other stuff, you can get a lot of adulterants. And the last thing is, is of course, black pe pepper is awesome. And then fats such as peanut butter, for example, yeah. can help a little bit with absorption too going on. So just something else to think. All yep. right. All right. Thank you. Thanks for pointing those out. Um, we hope that helps you guys with curcumin, turmeric, and kidney disease. And we'll see you all next time. Thanks, guys.